Hello, and welcome to the Classes and Objects module in our Introduction to VBA for ArcMap course. My name is Eric Pimpler, and I will be presenting this module. This module will cover the principles of classes and objects as they relate to VBA and Arc Objects. This module is perhaps the most important module in our Introduction to VBA for ArcMap course. The concepts you learn in this module are vital to understanding how to program with Arc Objects. However, before you can understand arc objects, you must understand some basic object-oriented concepts, such as classes, objects, object variables, COM objects, interfaces, and how to read an object model diagram. Classes and objects are at the heart of any modern-day object-oriented language, and VBA is no exception. We'll first describe classes and objects and how you work with them through object variables. Next, we'll take a closer look at COM objects. Arc Objects is built using the COM protocol, so a basic understanding of COM, COM is necessary for working with these objects. No discussion of COM would be complete without including a section on interfaces. When working with Arc Objects, you will work extensively with interfaces, so we'll spend ample time on this subject. Finally, we'll wrap up this module with a discussion of Let's first discuss the idea of classes in an object-oriented programming language. Classes are basically just blueprints for creating objects. Just as a construction contractor uses a blueprint to build a home, software developers use class blueprints to build software. Classes typically contain properties, methods, and events, and can be defined in a class module in VBA. Let's take a look at a simple example of classes and the objects that they can, be, that they can produce. When you place a command button on a user form, you are creating a new command button object that has been created from the command button class in VBA. Each object that you create from a class will have the same set of properties, methods, and events. However, each object is a unique representation of the class. Each can have different properties, respond to different events, and have procedures called. In other words, they can be tailored uniquely. Let's take a look at a simple class object example. In this slide, our class is the dog class. The dog class knows how to produce a certain type of dog, a beagle for example. We can think of the dog class as a blueprint for creating the actual dog or dog object. This blueprint dictates that each dog produced will have certain characteristics and behaviors. In this example, each beagle will be created from the same definition. Let's continue this example. <clears throat> the dog class blueprint calls for each beagle created to have the following properties name, age, owner, color, and weight. In object-oriented terms, these are the properties of an object. Each dog will also be able to eat and run. We call these behaviors of an object the methods. Notice that methods are typically verbs and properties are nouns. Each of these dog objects will also be able to respond to some external, ex some external stimulus. These are referred to as events. In the dog class, each dog object will be able to respond to the fetch event. A fetch event will be triggered by an outside stimulus such as an owner throwing a ball and telling the dog to fetch. Notice from this example that although each object contains the same properties, methods, and events, they have been assigned different values to their properties. Although this is a simple example, it can be carried over to the world of software development. You will often hear the terms class and object used interchangeably, but there is an important distinction which you probably have al already picked up on. Classes are the blueprint and define the characteristics and behaviors of the object def objects defined from them. Objects are the physical representation of the class. In construction terms, a home blueprint is used to create a physical structure that we call a home. All objects are created from a class and are capable, capable of manipulation by your VBA code. Let's take a look at an ARC objects example. In ARC objects, we have a class called Map. This class defines properties and methods that all maps have. have such as label, extent, scale, spatial reference, layers, and many others. Every map that is produced will have these same properties. However, each map object can have uniquely set properties. Now that you have a basic understanding of classes and objects, let's move on to a few other related issues. Classes are stored in programming li libraries that contain class definitions. Physically, they are stored in files with extensions such as DLL, OLB, TLB, exe and ocx. With ArcGIS 8.x, ArcObjects is stored in a single class library called ESRI Core. Starting with ArcGIS 9, the ESRI Core library is broken into many different libraries, all stored on your computer. 
The ESRI Object Browser is a help utility for browsing the contents of ArcObjects class libraries and is installed with your ArcGIS 9 installation. The ESRI Object Browser is a quick reference for which classes are available and what you can do with them. This tool is useful for gaining an understanding of the many classes, interfaces, properties, methods, and events avail available with ArcObjects. In this slide, you'll see a graphic display of the ESRI Object Browser. Click the link in this slide to see a demonstration. of the ESRI object browser. Object variables are declared in a similar manner as other variables through the use of the dim statement. However, you must use the set keyword to assign a value to a variable that has been declared as an object variable. Notice in this example that we are declaring a new object variable my dog and we are using the set keyword to assign a new dog object to the object variable. Once we have a reference to an object, we can use the properties and methods to interact with the object. The question of whether or not to use the set keyword is often confusing for program programmers new to VBA. The answer, though, is really quite simple. You always use set when assigning a value to an object variable. You will never use set when using a standard VBA data type, such as a string, date, integer, long, and others. In this example, we see a couple of demonstrations of, of assigning values to object variables. In each of the first two cases, we are using object variables, and thus we use the set keyword. In the final example, we do not use the set keyword since we are using an intrinsic VBA data type. Here we see more examples of when to use set. Notice that all the intrinsic VBA variables do not use the set keyword. With ArcObjects, you are using a set of programming libraries that have been developed by ESRI specifically for GIS functionality. At times, you may need to create your own classes specifically for your application. These classes are always stored in the VBA class modules. The methods and properties of a class must be defined in this module. COM objects deserve special mention in this course, as the ArcObjects programming libraries are built using the COM protocol. COM is not a programming language, language, but rather a standard that specifies how classes should be programmed. Although we won't go into great t detail on COM in this course, it is important to understand some basic concepts about this protocol. The benefits of developing COM compliant classes include component reuse and sharing of classes between applications. For instance, since ESRI's ArcObjects classes are COM compliant, they could be used in AutoCAD or Microsoft Word applications. COM relies heavily on the use of interfaces in its development of classes. Therefore, since ArcObjects is built using the COM protocol, you will work extensively with interfaces when programming ArcObjects with VBA. In fact, all communication between COM components happens via the interfaces of a component. If you take a look at the ESRI object browser, you will notice that many classes start with an I. An example of this is the IMAP class. The I actually stands for interface. Let's take a closer look at interfaces in the next slide. 
COM objects have one or more interfaces with each interface defining a logical grouping of methods and properties. All communication with a COM object occurs through the interface. In this example, you're looking at the point class in ARC objects. Notice all the interfaces on this class. Each interface is represented by the popsicle figure to the left, left side of the class. Each of these interfaces provides specialized functionality with its own set of methods and properties. The default interface for the point class is iPoint, which contains a number of properties including X, Y, Z, and a few others. In addition, you'll see various methods on this interface. As you begin programming with COM and ARC objects, you may find yourself wondering why there is a need to use interfaces. They can certainly be confusing to a beginning programmer. Perhaps the greatest advantage of using interfaces is that they enable a class to evolve through time through the addition of new interfaces. In addition, since interfaces cannot be removed after being added to a class, client code will not break as a class changes through time. Before you can begin writing code, you will need to understand what interfaces you will work with on a class. Remember that each class will contain one or more interfaces. This is best done through the study of object model diagrams, which are visual depictions of classes, interfaces, and the methods and properties contained within them. There are a number of points to keep in mind when working with interfaces. This is specified when you declare an object variable. An object variable that has been declared as a particular interface can be used on any object that supports the interface. Interfaces may be used by multiple classes. You must declare additional object variables to work with other, other interfaces on an object. In this slide, we'll take a look at a code example that shows you how to declare and set an object variable that points to an ARC object's interface. Pay particular attention to the comments in red. Notice that we declare an object variable in the same manner that we would declare any other variable. An object variable that can be declared with the dim, private, or public keywords depending on your needs for the variable. The data type of the variable is declared to be of a particular type of interface. In this case, the interface is imap, which is an interface on the map class. A good way of thinking about interfaces is to think of them as many classes containing only a limited portion of the full functionality of a class. As we mentioned in previous slides, you must use the set keyword to assign a value to an object variable. Here we are setting pmap equal to new map. The keyword new specifies that we want to create a new object from the map class. Finally, after we've defined and set our new object variable, we are able to use the methods and properties available on the imap interface. Remember that it is possible and common for an interface to be associated with more than one class. For example, the imap interface could potentially be implemented by, say, the page layout class or any other class that chooses to expose the imap functionality. Let's take a look at a generic interface example with the display monitor analogy. In this analogy, we will define a display monitor class that can display information from TV channels, DVDs, VCRs, internet, and game devices. Each of these will be defined as its own interface. For example, we could have iTV, iDVD, iVCR, iInternet, iGame, and many others. One of the strengths of using, interface of, the, of using the interface approach is that the display monitor class can grow over time as new display mediums become available. Old, old display mediums will still be available so that client code will not break. But through the use of interfaces, this class can now grow to support other functionality. With the interface approach, you must use the proper interface to, f to access the functionality you need. For example, you would not use the iVCR interface to access DVD type functionality, or vice versa. Now let's turn our attention to one of the fundamental concepts in object-oriented programming, class inheritance. In object-oriented programming, classes are built and arranged in a hierarchical pattern. Top-level classes are typically called abstract or superclasses. Classes that inherit from a superclass are called subclasses. All subclasses inherit their properties, methods, and interfaces from its superclass. Understanding class inheritance is probably best understood visually. In this example, layer is represented as a superclass. Layer will have a number of methods and properties. In this case, the methods are represented as arrows and their properties as single lines. Feature layer, raster layer, and tin layer are all classes as well, but in this case they are subclasses that inherit from their superclass layer. Each of these three classes will have their own methods and properties, but will also inherit the methods and properties on the layer object. Superclasses are typically defined as generic classes containing high-level methods, 
and properties, whereas the subclasses will be more specific. Let's spend some time discussing object model diagrams, which are simply visual depictions of how classes relate to each other. Object model diagrams are used to show relationships between classes, interfaces, methods, properties, and events. They are symbolic illustrations that help you understand how to use the classes and interfaces in your code. ArcObjects has an object model diagram that will help you understand the relationships between classes in these programming libraries. Conceptually, there is only one OMD diagram in ArcObjects. However, since ArcObjects has been broken up into multiple libraries, each library contains a separate OMD. Think of an OMD as a roadmap for your programming tasks. ArcObjects OMDs are stored in a number of ways. Please see the list below to find out how to access these diagrams. Object model diagrams contain a number of symbols that represent various concepts. Take a look at the symbols on this page and, general and the general description of each diagram, which we will detail in later slides. Let's take a look at some of the symbols in the simplistic OMD. In this diagram we see six classes, bird, chicken, coop, nest, egg, and wings. In this case, the bird, di bird class is represented as an abstract class, while chicken, coop, nest, egg, and wings are either creatable or instantiable classes. We will cover these in more detail in later slides. For now, just understand that they, are that they are all classes that differ somewhat in their capabilities. The important thing to focus on in this slide are the relationship symbols that we first discovered in our last slide. We've included a legend for these symbols in the lower right hand corner. Using this slide and the next, we will discover what each of these symbols mean. The first relationship symbol we'll cover is the type of symbol. In our diagram, a chicken is a type of bird. We could also expand this and create other types of bird, including turkey, cardinal, eagle, and many others. Each would be a separate class that is a type of bird. This is a superclass subclass relationship, with the bird being the superclass and chicken the subclass. Composed of is the second relationship symbol that we'll cover. A chicken is composed of wings, beak, claws, feathers, and tail. If the chicken is destroyed, then these other objects are also removed. The next relationship is the create a relationship. In this example, a chicken creates an egg. The multiplicity symbol indicates a relationship that there is one or more. A chicken has multiple wings. Finally, the most basic symbol is the association symbol, which simply indicates that two classes are somehow associated. These are used to describe very basic relationships, such as a chicken is associated with a coop. It doesn't describe how they are associated, just, just that there is an association. In this slide, we'll see a basic example of our relationship symbols in an ArcObjects context. Here we see four classes, Application, MX Document, Map, and Layer. Application refers to the Arc, Arc Map application. MX Document refers to the currently active map document or MXD file. Map refers to our data frame, and Layer refers to a layer in the table of contents or data frame. The way to read this is that an application is composed of an MX document. An MX document is composed of one or more data frames or maps. Note the use of the multiplicity symbol. Finally, a map is composed of one or more layers. Again, note the use of the multiplicity symbol. We'll now turn our attention to the various class types that you will encounter. The first class we'll discuss are abstract classes. In your ArcObjects OMDs, these classes are represented by a 2D shaded rectangle with the class name in italics. These classes are not creatable or instantiable. They exist only to define general interfaces for, class, for subclasses that will inherit from these abstract classes. So, you can never create objects from this most basic type of class. The next type of class that we will cover is the instantiable class. In your ArcObjects OMDs, these symbols are represented as 3D rectangles with no shading. You can see an example of the instantiable row class in this diagram. These classes are non-creatable classes in the sense that you can't use the new keyword to create a new object instance of these types of classes. Instead, you obtain an object instance from other objects. Note the code example in this slide. We are creating a new object variable, p new row, through the use of the create row procedure on the iTable interface. We are not able to simply write 
set p new row equals new row. The final type of class is the createable class, also called coclass, which is defined in your ArcObjects OMDs as a shaded 3D rectangle. You can see an example of a createable class in the map class in this diagram. These classes differ from instantiable classes in that you are allowed to use the new keyword to create new object instances from this type of class. In addition, object instances from these classes can be created from other objects just as they can with instantiable objects. In addition to the OMD relationship symbols that we've already covered, a few additional symbols need to be covered. These symbols cover relationships defined on particular interfaces and include methods, properties, and events. Properties are represented by the barbell symbol. Properties define the characteristics of an object and are typically represented by nouns. Properties can be read-write, write-only, or read-only. Read-write properties are represented by the full barbell symbol, which has two squares on either end of a bar. Write properties are represented by a square on the right-hand side of a bar, and read properties are represented by a square on the left-hand side of the bar. Methods define the behaviors of an object and are typically, rep typically represented by verbs. These behaviors are symbolically represented by an arrow. Events are also represented by an arrow, but the arrowhead is not filled in. Events are actions that we triggered by some type of external stimulus, such as a button or a mouse move. One final symbol that you will encounter is the lollipop symbol, which represents the presence of an interface. Interface symbols extend from the left-hand side of a class on your object model diagram, as depicted on this slide. Not all interface methods and properties will be listed for each class. You must look elsewhere for these. One final thing to mention before we leave object model diagrams is the presence of wormholes. Conceptually, there is only one object model diagram in arc objects, but physically there are many diagrams. Wormholes are used to connect the diagrams and simply inform you that a class is linked to another class in another OMD. Let's take a look at an, at an example of how to use methods and properties in arc objects. As we've discussed, the first step is to declare a variable that points to a, com, to a com interface object. In this case, we're defining a variable that points to the iLayer interface. Since this is a creatable class, we can use the new keyword to instantiate or create the object. We do this with the set player equals new feature layer statement. Once we've got a reference to our object, we can call methods and set properties. iLayer contains a property called name and visible, among others. These properties can be used through the syntax object.property. In this case, player.name or player.visible. Draw is a method on the iLayer object and can be called with the syntax object.method, where any arguments are enclosed as a list within, these parenth within the parentheses. Remember that you can only use methods and properties for the declared interface. For instance, player.addFeature p feature, will cause an error since the add feature method is not part of the iLayer interface. Another object oriented concept that we need to cover is the idea of polymorphism. Polymorphism means the ability to appear in many forms. In object oriented programming terms, polymorphism is defined in VBA to mean that many classes can support the same interface. All classes that support a particular interface must have the same methods and properties. However, they may implement those methods and properties differently. Many Arc Objects classes exhibit polymorphism. An example of polymorphism in Arc Objects is the iLayer interface, which all layer types in Arc Objects implement. All layers that can be brought into Arc Map support the iLayer interface feature layers, raster layers, graphic layers, and others. When programming with Arc Objects, you can access any layer in the map and use the iLayer interface to work with methods and properties that are common to every layer. In other, for an example, change the name, turn on or off. There are many such examples in Arc Objects. Last, but certainly not least, we need to discuss the idea of Query Interface, or QI, as it relates to COM interfaces. You can use the concept of QI to access methods and properties on other interfaces of an object. Since most classes have more than one interface, you will frequently need functionality contained on another interface of the same object. To use QI, you will need to declare more than one variable to access other interfaces. 
This allows multiple variables to perform work on the same object. In the next slide, we'll take a look at an example of QI. Layer is an abstract class that contains the iLayer and iGeodatabase interfaces, among others. Let's assume that you have created a variable to hold a reference to the iLayer interface. We set this variable equal to a particular layer in our data frame. Let's say we set it to the parcel layer. iLayer has certain methods and properties that we can access, including name, visible, and others. However, what we need to do is get the current extent of the layer. This property is not available on the iLayer interface. As we mentioned earlier, the layer class contains a second interface called iGeodatabase. This interface has a property called extent that will allow us to get the current extent of a layer. So the question is how do we apply this in the code? What we need to do is declare a second object variable that is a, re that is a reference to the iGeodatabase interface. When we instantiate the variable, we need to set it equal to the previously declared object variable that points to the iLayer interface. Once we've done this, we can have access to all the properties available on the iGeodatabase interface as well as the iLayer interface. This is a quick way of accessing methods and properties on the same object, but in separate interfaces. Take a look at the next slide to see a code example of how this is done. Study the code for an example of Query Interface, or QI. Notice that we declare two object variables, player and pgeodataset. player is set equal to the parcels layer in the ArcMap data frame. When VBA encounters the line message box player.extent, it will generate an error because the extent property isn't found on the iLayer interface. Therefore, we need to declare a second object variable, pgeodatabase, and set it equal to player. Now we can get all the methods and properties available on both of these interfaces through a single object variable, including extent. Before ending this module, we need to cover a couple of more miscellaneous items related to objects. When you are programming, it will often be necessary to test an object to see if it has a reference to a particular object type, or any type at all. We can use the nothing keyword to see if the object variable doesn't reference an object. An object variable that has the value nothing has either not been instantiated or the variable has been explicitly set to nothing. This type of object, this type of object variable testing ensures that the variable has been set before continuing with further use of the object in your code. The type of keyword can be used to test an object variable for an object type. For instance, you may want to make sure, ob sure an object variable is a certain type before continued processing. In our example in this slide, we test to make sure that the player object variable is an iFeatureLayer object variable. ArcObjects has two preset variables that, we'll use, that you will use as entry points in your programming tests with ArcMap and ArcObjects. The first is the application variable, which is a reference to the iApplication interface on the application object. The second is this document, which is a reference to the IMX document interface on the IMX document object. Our catalog is slightly different in that you need to reference IGX document. We'll take a look at how these work in the next slide. In this example, pay particular attention to the first two lines of code. In the first line, we are simply, simply declaring an object variable that references the IMX document interface. In the second line, set PMX doc equal to this document, we see an example of how you will use one of the preset arc objects variables as an entry point into the arc objects programming libraries. Your code will invariably begin with these two lines of code for arc map coding efforts. Once you've gained access to arc objects through the preset variables, you're free to access other objects in the library.